you think they're far superior because you can't stick to the things you said you would do. Because if you did, your perspective changes just like mine did. It's no longer this praise of, oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could produce that. I wish I can grow like that. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. I'm your host, AZ Araujo. Please check in as you're coming on board and thank you again for joining me. We will spend 20 minutes or so to recalibrate, recommit, and, and take the lessons, right, that life is teaching us to empower us to have a great day, a great week, and a great final quarter of 2020. Now, uh, this past weekend, uh, I completed my Olympic triathlon, and uh, this is the, the precursor, right? That it is the, the competition before the competition of the Ironman 70.3, which is coming up in two weeks. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I'll tell you what, like, uh, after completing this Olympic triathlon, I, I feel very, very um, confident that I am going to do very well at the 70.3. And, you know, I have to really consider everything that I've done up to this point to, to make me feel this way, right? I, if I didn't do the work, if I didn't do the necessary reps, uh, put in the necessary time, made the necessary sacrifices, I don't think I would be in this position. And it, it is a complete contrast to, you know, the first, I, or the first Olympic triathlon I ever did or the first triathlon period, the first sprint triathlon, where I'm looking at it now and it was just irresponsible, right? <laughs> I was irresponsible just going into that competition thinking that I was good enough, right? Thinking that I was conditioned enough to be able to compete. In fact, I didn't even know how to swim. And it was irresponsible because, uh, you know, I, I put uh, everyone, myself at risk. And I, I depleted resources from the event because there was a lifeguard that was following me the entire time. Um, and uh, I put others at risk because if they're focusing on me, that means they can't watch everyone else. So uh, to see that complete contrast um, makes me very, very proud of where I'm at. But it, it, it really makes me understand that with anything that we want in life, it requires the necessary reps. Now, uh, there was a few things that happened. And, and today I want to talk about, you know, praising versus, you know, respecting individuals. But before I get into that, um, I want to tell you the night before the competition, which was this past Saturday, uh, my battery to my uh, electronic shifters on my, on my uh, tri bike went out. Like they completely went out. And um, I, I was, uh, I freaked out a little bit. I was like, oh, how does this happen the evening of, right? Now it could have been worse. I could have found out that morning and I had no solution. So in a way, I, I, I was already being sucked in by the challenge as opposed to like taking a step back and realizing, hey, it's a good thing that you're at least able to figure this out the night before and not the morning of. If I were to try to figure out the morning of, I, I, I don't think I would have uh, felt the type of energy that I have right now, right? Um, and that's the key to all things is to be able to see that there is a, you know, a silver lining somewhere. But we got to be able to look for it. So, yes, it, it sucked that my battery went out. Right now I have to try to find a solution or, 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 or uh, you know, change it all together. But um, I did find that out. And my plan the night before was to go to sleep at 830 in the, at night. I had to set all my things up, get a good night's rest, come in there, energized, ready to go, well rested. And uh, that got thrown out the window. Um, uh, when I found out my battery went out, I'm, I'm, I'm in panic mode for a little bit there, right? And the first thing I try to do is, was, there's always three things we can do in any situation. And we talked a little bit about it last week. We could either try to fix it, we could either try to change it, or we could try to accept it, right? And in this case, um, I, I try to fix it at first. So I called uh, Cyclologic, and I want to give them a big thumbs up and a big, uh, you know, a, a big thank you, because I, I, I text the owner. And uh, he was able to get one of his mechanics to call me right away. So we went through this whole process of trying to diagnose what happened. And I'm not a big uh, mechanical type of guy. Like, my tools are limited. And in fact, I'm embarrassed to say that part of my, uh, part of my tools includes a spoon. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why that is. I just, I, I was never really one of those guys, right, that can fix things. Um, and I'm okay with that. That's just not my forte. It's not my passion. I don't even like doing it. 
Um, so I, I was trying to work through it and I knew enough on how to use a screwdriver and how to use certain Allen wrenches. So I, I went through the process of unplugging, uh, trying to reset the, the, the electronic shifter, um, diagnosing it in different areas and nothing worked. Uh, then he suggested I check the battery under the seat. So I, I'm, I'm using these tools, very, you know, inexperienced. And I pull out the seat, and yes, there's this huge battery, about six inches. And um, I, I, I unplug it and plug it back in, and it turns out that the battery just died. There's no fixing this whatsoever. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I am on a, I have one shift, one shifter that works, right? It's, it's wherever it's frozen at, you can continue to use that. But if you're going up hills and down hills, it's not going to be the most effective training. In fact, I, I, I'm more likely to burn out. I'm more likely to lose my confidence. I'm more likely, right, to, to injure myself in a situation like that. Because it, the track that we were doing was full of hills, was full of downhills. So there's even a safety aspect to it. It's just not the right equipment. But I was prepared to do that. Right? I was prepared to that because one, I couldn't fix it. So the second option is to accept it. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I can't accept it, but there's another option. There's another option. I have a beautiful road bike. All right? I have my cheap Olimini that I bought two years ago and it, and it works well. However, it's been out of commission for about uh, six months. The, the tires, I, I'm not sure if I had, uh, if they were going to hold up right? Which again, I'm thinking safety. I fell a few times already. So the last thing I want to do is, is get injured again on competition day, right? So I'm already losing some confidence there as well. I'm like uh, looking at these tires and wheels and I'm like, okay, I'm airing them up. I see a little bit uh, of the, uh, of the seal sealant coming out, but I'm thinking, okay, it's doing its work because they're tubeless, right? It's doing its work. It's going to plug up. It's going to be just fine. And uh, so I'm going through that process. And at the same time, I'm like uh, really disliking the fact that I'm even in this situation, right? Nine o'clock comes around, 9.30. And I'm like, geez, I should have been in bed by now because that was the original game plan. I haven't set up all my items. Like, how is this going to happen? So um, uh, I end up calling my brother-in-law, Rio. He's also an agent here at AZ and Associates. And, and he is more t you know, mechanically inclined than I am. So, <laughs> and that doesn't take much. I mean... Uh, you, you name a few tools and you're way above my capacity when it comes to that. Uh, so he comes over and um, he, he was able to change the pedals out for me, right? Because um, I have to change the pedals from my Trek, uh, from my Trek bike to my Cipollini. So that I don't have the right tool. So he comes over uh, and changes that. Then he suggests, which I think was a blessing. He suggests that I change out the rims from my Trek, which are some really nice wheels and tires. Uh, there is no problems with that because I just got it uh, uh, looked at a couple days before. Um, and again, that would give me the confidence of not having to worry if the tires on my Cipollini, the ones that came on the Cipollini, were going to bust or, 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 or create a problem for me. So we Googled, can we change th from this to this? And sure enough, we can. We can change it from my Trek to my Cipollini because they have the same number of of, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know, I, I can't even describe it, but the same number of something, right? <laughs> and uh, I go ahead, uh, he goes ahead and makes the change and things just start falling in line, right? There were still some reservations because I haven't trained on it in a while. But then as I learn that there's only three things that we can do, either fix it, accept it, or change it, that things will always turn out the way they should, right? It's this place of, not accepting, not wanting to accept it, right? Not wanting to fix it, not wanting to change it that keeps us frozen and not doing anything. Because I know that if a challenge like this would have come before, I would have probably said, ah, you know what? It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be, right? And how many times have we said that to ourselves, right? It is what it is. It's a, it's a BS excuse, all right. It is what it is. Oftentimes is used as a way to get out of certain things. Now, I understand it if it's used to accept certain things. It is what it is. Okay, I got to move forward. But most people say it is what it is. Like they're giving up. I know that if I wasn't in this place of power, I know if I hadn't put the reps, I know if I didn't have the wisdom, something we talked about last week, and the respect for what I've done, right? 
If I didn't have those things, I don't think I would have moved on. But because I've stuck to the game plan, because I know that with every great, you know, every great level that we're entering to, there's going to be an almost immediate counteraction, which is the obstacle, right? The resistance. So I followed the process. I was willing to fix it. I was willing to accept it or I was willing to change it. Fixing didn't work, right? Accepting it, yeah, that would have put me in a, 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 at a disadvantage in many ways, but then I could change it. I've invested in myself. I've invested in my equipment. It didn't happen by chance, right? And in fact, after I learned to change it, then I accepted what is. I accepted that now I'm going to ride on a road bike that I haven't ridden in six months, not only did, 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 did it help me, but I think it would give me an advantage. On these mountain climbs, on these downhills, the control that I had, it was the perfect equipment for that particular challenge, which is amazing, right? Which is absolutely amazing if you really think about it. It happened the way it should have. But again, we don't find these revelations. We don't find the silver linings, the blessings. Because once we face a challenge, once some of you face a challenge, or like me, I would sit there and loathe. I would sit there and, and, and just complain, being victimized by the situations as opposed to seeing why it happened. I'm not saying it was divine. All I'm saying is it was meant to happen this way. And it reinforced the fact that regardless whatever comes my way, I will continue to move forward and I will not stop. Now, is there thought processes? Is there some, you know, slivers of like, why is this happening? Absolutely. But very minor. I will find a solution. And whatever I end up accepting or changing, I will own it. So if it would have been with that one gear, you bet your ass I would have owned that. I would have gave it my all like I did this past week. And I felt great. Competition day. Woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. We ended up going to sleep at about 11, 11.30. Woke up at 3. I, I refused to believe that I was going to be tired. Because I know my body will be able to take that on. So I didn't fall into that, oh, well, I'm, I didn't have enough sleep, so I, I, I won't be able to compete as effectively. I've heard great champions. I listen to their air interviews very carefully. And if you, if you pay attention, you'll hear them saying, I couldn't sleep last night. I didn't sleep. And they, come, and they come the next day and dominate the competition, dominate their opponent. I heard that a few times this, this Saturday. There were some UFC fights on. And some of them were like, I was nervous. I couldn't sleep. Right? I was excited. So I use that to my advantage. I, I don't need that sleep. Because my body will remember what I told it to do. My body will remember what I told it to do. And I went out there with so much appreciation. It was a beautiful day, beautiful morning. I took my time. I made sure I planned accordingly. I planned all my nutrition. I planned all my, my hydration. I envisioned myself. I sat there and I envisioned what it would look like when I came out of the water, taking off my wetsuit, putting on my cycling gear. I envisioned it all. What it would look like as I'm coming back from the bike, removing, right? My, my, my cycling gear and getting right into my running gear. I kept on reminding myself, I've done this, I've done it hundreds of hours, thousands of miles on the bike. And it was a constant reminder of the work. And when you're in integrity on what you're supposed to do, what you're responsible for, all you have to do is remind yourself.
there was zero thought of I should have done more, I should have prepped better. There was zero thought of that. Because I've stayed in line with the things I'm supposed to do. Because when it comes to game day, I am going to deliver. You can try to avoid all the things you, try to, uh, you, you want to do for your business. You may allow it to be an option from time to time. I don't have to market today. I don't need a follow-up. I'll call them tomorrow. I'll reply to this email later. All that creeps up at the moment of truth on game day. You're either going to be more confident or less confident. And you know, your integrity knows. And some of us have just gotten okay with saying, with being able to analyze what we did afterwards. Oh, I should have did this. Dang it. Well, I'll tell you what, if you were on your game, you would have said that. And what you're disregarding is all the reps that you missed. Because if you were more aware, more prepared, you would have caught that. You would have shifted. You would have pivoted. That's what a lot of us don't get. Now, when it comes to game day, you could have been more confident. But instead, we're less confident because of all the things we missed. Oh, I should have said this. Ah, oh, I, I should have prepared it this way. I should have never done this or that. I could have done this or that. You could have just stuck to doing what you were supposed to do each and every day but yet you're trying to shift on game day. I didn't change anything from my game day. I was there to deliver. I was going to kill it. I was going to remind myself to finish strong. Because I've been going at this game for a very long time. And my wisdom tells me that I'm going to deliver. Because my integrity is in line. So we have to think about those things. Because game day shouldn't be the time you you actually learn. It shouldn't. You you, you could take lessons from it, but it's not not really the time for you to, to make these big mistakes. You're supposed to make those mistakes during prep time. You're supposed to adjust as you're prepping. Because the big day sometimes doesn't come soon enough. So as I'm finishing this, this, this race, and it's, it's a very challenging race. I don't think I ever want to do that again. I'll, I'll be honest with you. That one was a challenging one. As soon as you leave the transition area, there's, there's a big mountain. There's a hill, big hill, right? So you have to go up, and you're almost like not even moving at all, although... There were some people that were moving pretty fast through that. I just couldn't. And again, I have thousands of reps under me, and I just couldn't move that fast up the mountain. I was moving effectively within my capacity, right? But it, it was a challenge because it's, it's like I was counting them. One, two, three, four. One loop, you're doing at least six to eight climbs. So it was tough. And then to come back around and then the first thing you do out of the transition when you go to the run, you have to go up these hills again. (laughs) So for me to be able to to finish in the nine-minute mile mark, I think it was nine, maybe closer to 10, 9.30-something, I was really proud of that on the run and 19.1 miles an hour on my bike. I, I thought that was pretty good. There's areas that I need to improve. I think I could have done a little bit better on the swim, but I didn't exhaust myself. 
And I felt strong coming out of this. But I remember there was a time, and this is where I want to get into the conversation, the conversation today, right? Um, of how easy it is for us to just praise other people. I would find myself praising other people on a consistent basis. I mean, you may do that when it comes to business. You may look at our top producers and say, wow, praising them all day long. Like there's some type of idol, right? Um, like they're, they're, they're this anomaly. And I would do that. I would compare myself to other brokerages and sit there in awe of how, right? Again, they're an anomaly. They're some type of idol. And even comparing to individuals that, that dominate the sport, I would just, again, I have friends that, that, that do this, and I would sit there. I was like, how does he do it? Like, right? When we, ask, when we tell those, ourselves those type of, um, or, or make those type of comments, we, we essentially tell ourselves that we're incapable of doing such things, right? When we're in awe of somebody's production, when we appraise them to the skies, and uh, hear me out here, because I'm not trying to sound like you shouldn't, you know, look to these individuals as an inspiration, but what I'm saying that is when you just sit there and accept that they're far superior, that's essentially telling yourself that you are inferior, that you're incapable, that you lack the skill sets, that you lack the mindset to be able to deliver at that same level. And I was looking at the wrong camera here. We got like four cameras, so sorry about that. I'm trying to make eye contact with you. So when we pray somebody else to the skies, they're far superior, and we are essentially inferior. And listen, done that. Wow, my friend here, he's doing the Ironmans. He's, he's doing all these great things. Which means I can't do it. In fact, I, I got a text the other day because I put uh, my, my mileage down, right? I did like 13 miles. And trust me, there was a time where I couldn't, uh, I didn't think I could do eight miles, where I could do four miles. It was a conditioning process, right? of setting my mind to something and just chunking it down, getting myself better each and every time. I get a text message from like, wow, you know, AZ, that's so awesome. I can't even do three miles straight. I hope that I, I, I wish I could do that. Again, the way he approached it is like he's incapable of. As opposed to respecting what I'm doing, he's praising what I'm doing. Right? As opposed to me uh, uh, respecting what these competitors were doing, I was praising them to the skies like it was impossible for me to obtain the same things. And you may be doing that with our top producers. You may be looking at all these, these conventions and uh, online conventions of, of these self-proclaimed or sometimes you know, proclaimed by others of top producers in the entire country and you're sitting back like, wow, how lucky. I wish I could do what they're doing. That's great. Like I said before, you're no hater, right? You're no hater. Hey, that's, you're praising them to the skies. But you're doing the wrong things. You're praising them to the skies because you're lacking the consistency. You think they're far superior because you can't stick to the things you said you would do. Because if you did... Your perspective changes, just like mine did. It's no longer this praise of, oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could produce that. I wish I can grow like that. Now it's a deep-rooted respect for them. Because I know what they sacrificed I know the pains they overcame, the obstacles they had to overcome. I understand their journey. So it's no longer, I'm not looking at these guys no longer like, oh my gosh, look at these idols. I'm like, holy shit. I respect the hell out of you. 
because I understand what it takes to do the work. I understand what it takes to get to that level. And it's far greater than what I'm doing right now, but they're no longer this anomaly. They're just more committed or have done it longer than you. These top producers are not an anomaly. They've either done it longer than you or have been more consistent than you. But hey, you're no hater. You're so good. Oh my God, you're $40 million. I wish I could do that. Quit telling yourself that story because you're not inferior. Just got to get more consistent. You got to get more committed. You got to do what you say. And your whole entire perspective shifts. And the respect is to the core. I respect these men and women that are living life at that level. Holy shit did they sacrifice. Holy shit are they on their game. They're not an anomaly. They just did the work. And they continue to stay committed to the work. Regardless of whatever comes their way. 18 weeks of this. I'm no damn anomaly. I'm consistent as all hell. So whatever it is you're trying to achieve, listen, like use those people as inspiration. But don't ever put yourself in an inferior situation. Start looking at your behaviors instead. Start looking at what they do versus what you're failing to do. Because then you'll just get stuck there. Admiring others about how great of a life they're living. What about you? What about you? You know, it's BS. But we get into these thought processes, right? When we fail to do the necessary work. So what is it that you want from your business? Get to work. What is it that you want from your body? Only one solution. Do the work. Quit looking at others' marriages in awe. Start looking at how you're failing to show up. That's what we have to constantly remind ourselves. And we have to put these targets in place to be able to force change. This entire process has opened up an entirely new possibility for me of where I'm going. First, I thought it was just about my body. No, 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 no. You should see what's coming up next. And I'm excited. But it also reinforces how committed I am. And listen, this is a conditioning process. I'm no anomaly, just like the, you know, the people I'm looking at. They're no anomaly. You're no anomaly. You top producers, you're no anomaly. But I respect your hard work. Hell yeah. You've done a lot. You've overcome a lot. But it's these moments of doubt that keeps us at the status quo. It's when you have those thoughts of doubt and you do nothing about it. As opposed to forcing and showing up. That growth that was supposed to come after that, well, all you did was delay it. So let's pay attention to how we view others because no one is superior. Because at the moment you think that, you're led to believe you're inferior. And that's not the case. So doing this is nothing that any one of you can do. There's nine men that did it with me, or eight. There was uh, one missing. All of them had their own challenges. All of them had their own obstacles to overcome. And I was proud to stand there with them, 
knowing that they got through it. Everyone had their own battles to fight, and they got through it with a smile on their face and with the determination to make the necessary changes to be ready for the next one. Every one of them has more confidence. Every one of them, their business is growing. There's a sense of certainty that whatever comes their way, they will overcome because they put themselves in that situation because they could have easily been complacent in how life is. Like who wants to add an additional three hours of working out every day? Plus grow a business, plus handle a family. Why put this pressure on us? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they're diamonds. These dudes are on fire. You want to feel that? Find a challenge for yourself. And don't just sit back there and say, wow, you're so cool. You're so awesome. I can't believe it. I can never do that. Right? I can never do that. You're essentially saying, I'm too, I'm too stupid. I'm too slow. I'm not committed. I'm inferior. That's BS. Own it. Do it. Let's get on our game. So I want to thank you for joining me in this episode of Mindset Mastery. Hopefully this information resonated with you. If you have something uh, that, it, that, that uh, made you think about your own personal journey, please share it with us. I'm going to read a few comments here. But what are you hearing in this conversation, right? How easy it is to just praise others in a way that we can't do it when all we have to do is just learn to respect the work that they've done. Like my whole viewpoint of the people that I used to be like, I can't, I, I, I couldn't do this. Now I'm like, it's a deep-rooted respect and appreciation. And if I want to get at that level, I better stay consistent as, as, as hell, right, on a daily basis. But you too can be a $20 million producer, $40 million producer if you didn't want that. Don't think you're, it's ever above you. But there's a certain pattern of things you have to do to get to that level. And right now, if you're not, if you're half that, if you're a quarter of that, an eighth of that, that means that there's big holes and big gaps in your ability to stay consistent. Either that or you just haven't allowed enough time to take its course. But if you're consistent and you allow time it's only a matter of time before you get there. So what do we got here? Let me see. Sergio, I believe at this point in my life, we do not need to suffer to have respect for the wisdom working. However, if we do not suffer from time to time, we will never have respect for what we have already been through. Sometimes these obstacles arise to slow us, uh, to slow us down and respect how far we have actually come, in my opinion. The wisdom we have. Oh, okay. The, for the wisdom we have working. Okay, got it. Love it. Sergio, like, dude, good work. Sergio was one of those that completed it with me, and, and he'll tell you. It was, he felt great. He was on cloud nine. It, it, it's funny how we could take a beating and then still feel so good afterwards. It's like, oh, another day. Vivian, good morning. I came across a post from Mel Robbins today, and it said, stop saying I wish, start saying I will. Perfect. Mel Robbins, the, the five-second rule. Awesome book. Like, if you want a, a motivational book that'll get you fired up, listen to this, the five-second rule on audiobook. Uh, it was well executed. One of the best audiobooks I think I've, I've read. There's some books that I, I love to read, and there's some books that I love to hear. And that, just like the book Relentless, just like You Can't Hurt Me, are, are really good books to listen on audio. And um, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how good I feel. Um, you know, to, to overcome the stories of I'm not this person to like, hell yeah, I am this person. It feels so good, right? But there's a process there. 
And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that I that I decided to train for this competition. I'm so thankful that I. It, it really stems back from when I tore my my tendons three years ago, right? Where there was no other choice but to cycle because I couldn't use my upper body. So I bought my first bike, the Iron Maiden. And those that have been in my circle understand who the my Iron Maiden is. This thing is like 60 pounds. <laughs> and I started with that. And it's been passed around to the different guys that decided to join us on these bike rides. And entering my first sprint triathlon. And then my, my first Olympic triathlon. And then just uh, committing to this Ironman, right, on a conversation as we're hanging out at, at the lake. Rio Vidrio suggests that, hey, maybe we should do this, uh, this Ironman 70.3. And I disregarded it. Only to wake up being like, this is what must be done not realizing it would wake up the men around me and inspire many others that are watching this journey, right? To now be at this, this place where I feel great about doing Olympics and I'm going to go in there with the gaze of confidence for my Ironman 70.3. I love how it all works out, but I, I put myself in uncomfortable situations each and every time. The water... The water, like getting into water and learning how to swim properly, that alone is a big feat. Being from a city that moves slower and knowing a lot of people, I did well in my real estate career. Not going to lie, the thought of joining the Phoenix market was extremely intimidating. Sometimes still is. These talks teach me that I can be great in this fast-paced market and succeed at a top level. Thank you. Megan, you've done so much to get yourself out of that comfort zone. Because you're leaning in, right? You're refusing just to think that this is somebody else's game. That is only possible for them and that success is limited. It's available to all of you. Every one of you. What is it that you want to create? It's available to you. But we got to do the things that have been proven to work. And Megan, there were some reservations. I can't do this. I won't do that on social media. And then you started owning it. And slowly but surely, you're gaining the confidence. And from the confidence will come clientele base. And from that clientele base will come the profits you desire. Still figuring it out a lot, but I, I know I can do it. Absolutely. And that's the key to all things, right? And Patrick, what I get from this is to challenge yourself beyond what you think you can accomplish. Go all out and be great. And with that being said, thank you for that, Patrick. And that's exactly the point, right? Um, I want to thank all of you for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. Hopefully, it, it just got you in alignment with who you need to become, who you need to become, right? The focus is on you and no one else to be able to accomplish the things you desire for yourself and your family. Thank you again for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.